was just the first take. <laughs> <laughs> Psych. <laughs> oh, that's uh, that was the the best take out of ten. Many. <laughs> um, nah, it was ten. But a lot of it is just getting you know stringed instruments, getting tunings <laughs> in sync with each other, especially when they're yeah. like brand new. You know, it's like yeah. Like brand Cabling new strings up. always stretching. <laughs> That's a challenging song. So, the unknown, mm-hmm. yeah. which is must be like you must have written that a decade ago or something, huh? Oh, uh, it's I, I'm getting old enough to the point where it's almost yes, almost ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I feel old. <laughs> I remember when like when I first wrote that, I used to be able to say, "Oh yeah, this is a fresh, fresh song." And, now it's everybody's like no i heard that already yeah. <laughs> it's still pretty fresh I'll... it's it's fresh when i don't play it for a while <laughs> like we well, just i haven't did. i haven't heard it with Corey yet that was awesome um cor and i i think we've dabbled with that song a little bit on tour but and we played in it's China. been two years right yeah and i think like that was one of the songs we just decided to try on stage live we didn't really practice and then it's slowly after show to show it started coming together more and more but I think, um, yeah, we were, we did we could pretty spend... good for the first time. Like, you know, we, we didn't make too much mistakes yeah. we, during the show. We could spend all night just, you know, with you guys working that out. I mean, we but... pretty much spent like, <laughs> like two hours. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. We got a bunch of killer instruments. We're going to first feature the new Pono Master Series. So yeah. Ryan Condon from Koolau designed a lattice brace tenor maybe four years ago or so that we sold and I was super impressed with it. So a few years back, I asked him to um, see if he could drop the blueprints for this series and he made a top that we sent to them along with the full blueprints. So it's um, I'll put it up on the screen right now what a lattice brace looks like with the with the bracing on the inside and there's also like tapering towards the edges it's it's entirely different um specs than the than the uh, regular pono even though from the outside it looks pretty much the same yeah i mean like unless you look underneath the hood and try it out yeah it's um it's hard to tell the difference you can tell the master series by um my mom did this line drawing for an inlay years back that uh, she based off of an old painting maybe but yeah that became like the koalau logo or a logo of sorts oh i thought i know i, I would AJ made it <laughs> no well my, my mom drew that out he might have put it into a vector file yeah, or something yeah, okay. but anyways wow um but yeah both of you guys are playing spruce rosewood oh yeah which is one of my favorite mm-hmm. always nice so um you know we have samples and we have the new master series up on the site so we don't need to get full-on samples yet but what i want to do is clay i want to just to run through it i want you to do something in the 30 40 you know something under a minute sure and then we're going to start with the regular pro classic and then go to this master series and then we'll try it with um the koalau aho loji these are the alohi high g right now and then we'll do that same thing with the Cedar series. So yeah, let's get into it. Cool. more sound.
What's the G over traveling? <laughs> no, oh, okay. Can I just take this home? Big fan of the Master Series for sure. But which oh. one you like the Cedar Top better? I don't know. Like this one sounds really nice paired with the Low G. To be honest, it's like super deep. But then, then again, I mean, like you know, Spruce tends to cut a little bit more. You know, as far as like the highs are a little bit more clearer. But man, the Cedar Top is something else. <laughs> I'm actually surprised at how warm the, that spruce is, though. Yeah, it's surprisingly really warm. It's got like I mean, this kind of fat mid range. What type of spruce is it? Engelman. Okay, so Engelman is actually the warmer yeah. of the spruce family, right? Yeah, but still, it's like, well, I mean, I don't know how much you guys can hear the differences. The better the source you're listening on, the more you're mm. going to hear the nuances. But when you. When you feel it against your body, even with these new oh, yeah. master series, you can just feel the the bigger body of the sound, right? I mean, you can feel the whole thing, yeah. the whole instrument kind of what, resonates. What, what do you think, Spruce versus Cedar, Corey? I kind of want to hear the this one in high G fluorocarbon. Yeah. But this, mm -hmm. usually uh, titaniums or the alohis are kind of too plinky sounding. This complements the ukulele probably, maybe not the best. I mean, it's all, it's all opinion, but yeah. Oh, I think like the, because the gauges are different for the Ko'ola Olohis versus the Didario, you know, titanium string. So I think that's what's probably bringing more sound out of it, or it just complements the ukulele pretty well. I think with this, when you play the, um, fluorocarbon strings in there it's a little I mean it's a lot clearer but then with this there's a that mid-range that yeah. comes through a lot better more 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 but I think on the cedar top the fluorocarbon strings actually matches better than a, your typical nylon set in my opinion just because it accentuates the high frequencies a little bit more so yeah because you don't get any high yeah yeah. So. yeah I think my yeah I really like that cedar with the um Aho Lo G set. Yeah. The floor card. This thing sounds huge now. But I kind of like the uh, spruce with the high G for some reason. I don't know. Hmm. Tell us what you guys, uh, what you what you thought, what you liked in the comments. Um, so, Corey, that guitar that you played the intro on, we actually need a sound sample on it. That's a, uh, a new 0030 with the spruce top. And where where did it go? We put it back in the case. Oh. We did we didn't get an individual sample, right? All oh, right, yes. let me get a sample of that, and then um, and then after that, uh, we're gonna do the Instagram contest. So, um, yeah. Okay, this is the 0030 spruce top, featuring Rosa back and sides. All of the 30 series are rosewood, super nice maple binding. This is with the 12th fret to the body, usually 
uh, well, we've had double O's that had 14. This one is 12 and brings the bridge into a sweeter spot so you get a, you know, a little bit more of a fuller sound. Slotted headstock. Uh, this is in standard tuning and I'll be using my fingers for a finger picking song. So check it out. So as you guys remember, we a few weeks ago on the podcast, we announced this Instagram contest, and then um, we've gotten some amazing entries. I think you guys will be pleased to hear nice. the talent. Um, so the uke that Corey has right now, speaking of Lattice Brace, um, Jason Wolverton is one of the only other people I know of, LFDM. Uh, does lattice brace ukes Jason Wolverton Ryan and now the new Pono Master Series if uh, if you guys know of other luthiers building with the lattice brace in the ukulele world let us know in the comments it's uh, it seems to be a, a pretty cool system for getting a lot of sound it's a pretty pretty loud but balanced uke right so anyways, um, somebody's going to win this, and now um, I'm going to play you guys, the 10 contestants. So we have uh, we have judges. We have uh, Brittany Paiva, nice. Brian Tolentino, cool. and Neil Chin. But uh, I'm going to get your guys' votes before we show theirs, and then uh, we'll see who wins. I think it's a winner right there. It's nice. <laughs> is that the, is that the winner?
That was really nice, dude. Like that song. What song was that? You got got friend. Friend. That was from Toy Story. Toy Story. Everyone's like super technical. Is that a soprano? Mm. I just realized that's a Martin. Oh, that was right. These are wow. hard. <laughs> know, it's like right? James Hill wow. Jr. right there. <laughs> that was crazy too. That was some crazy look. He's having the most fun. I know. He's like, he's not even looking at what his fingers are. Yeah. He's just enjoying playing. That's what it's about. Yeah, that was... Wow. Damn. And that's in uh, a whole step up in tuning. Yeah, it's like he's in D. Is it? Maybe a whole way? Oh, whole step, yeah. Try to see. See, like half. Oh. Oh, it's C sharp. Super. She was on the last one. Too. What, oh, she was, yeah. was that a uh, Abe's arrangement?
I was. Uh, it a sucks. lot harder than like, the last time. <laughs> like it sucks to be Brittany, Neil, and Uncle Brian right now because no, every single one of those are so hard to choose from. Well, they already they already chose. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna put the video up, but I mean, we we all know that you guys mean no harm in discluding anybody, but you have to pick one. Yeah. It's, oh man. If, you want to see replay? If we're going by technicality or feel, I mean, there's. I really like the new soul guy and that guy, mm. and then the other, other person who played Misty was very, um, was more expressive. Yeah, he's you know, good. more tasteful. You know, wasn't so Chad like. Was on the last one too, and he, he's really good. But I, I, like everyone is just really good. I mean, I was blown away from the first one already, and then yeah, as we got oh. deeper and deeper. It's just like my eyes just, yeah, just that, got bigger and this bigger. Guy, he, um. He reminds me of uh, oh, Ch- Tobias. Yeah, kind of percussive style. stuff. I like that. It's nice when you can hear like mm-hmm. influences in different people, and but taking it in their own direction. Oh yeah. All right. So I guess just a, a real quick review. Uh, that guy, right? Then um, got a friend in me. Then young guy. I think it's it's between the first one, this one, and the James Hill guy. Yeah, that's why I was like. Yeah. Okay, so this one. I don't think it might be biased because I'm a huge, huge fan of James. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. I, I might, know. I might have to pick him. Yeah, I would say him. Even though everybody was great. But then that was one of my favorite songs. Uh, uh. Mm. Mm. The R&B one. Was that uh, Nelly and somebody? Could I see the Neo Soul one? I mean, he's really smooth. Okay, so. I think he's smooth. Yeah, that's a super hard arrangement too. I was just looking at like some of his legs. So just like it's a lot of like he was doing harmony runs and everything. <laughs> so that guy is his handle is F R V K M B N B, and then the one you pick is Magical Mom. So. One point for Friv Kip Niv 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 Like uh something like that. And then one point for Magical Mom. And then let's see what our other judges pick. So start off with Uncle Brian. Hey Aloha my Kako. My name is Brian Tolentino. I'd like to thank Andrew Kitakis and the uh, ukulele site for having me judge their uh, Instagram ukulele contest. I tell you what, man, there's so much great ukulele talent out there. But my choice this particular time is FRV, KMV, RV. So congratulations to you and congratulations to all the other entrants. And What's up, everyone? I had such a great time watching all of your videos. I think all of you did a spectacular job, and you made my decision extremely hard. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to go with Four String Boy for this one. That was the first day. That was solid, though. I mean, a cool stuff. Aloha. This is Neil Chin here. Uh, and I'm super excited to be joining you folks today for the Ukulele Sites Instrumental Ukulele Contest. Uh, it was a uh, Great pleasure. It was really fun to do, actually, just to listen to all of the submissions um, for the contest because, my goodness, um, not only did I feel like everybody did such a fantastic job, everybody killed it, but I really appreciated the wide array of different styles and different approaches to playing the ukulele. 
uh, is just a, a friendly reminder of the wide world of the instrument and how far you know we've taken it. And you know, I look forward to the future, and uh, I look forward to where we're gonna take it next. Um, but you know, going through all of it and listening to it, you know, it was a kind of a hard pick. You know, there was different, a lot of different qualities. I feel like that, you know, people did very well. Whether if it was a sense of really good sense of time, uh, if it was, you know, a particular technique, or maybe there was a really, a really good feel in one. Um, you know, after you know going through it a couple of times, I had to land on this individual, which I'm gonna try to pronounce your name here, your handle, which is, wait for it, Fravkumvum. You did a pretty good job at having no vowels in your name here. I'm going to spell it too. That's F-R-V-K-M-V-N-V. -V -V. Very nice job. Very nice job. I very much appreciated your, your tone. Very much appreciated well, your sense of time. And the way that you integrated your technique in a way that uh, provided feel for the song, I thought it was really nice. Um, you know, as you're going from those that higher passage of the harmonics into, you know, your single notes, um, you know, your fretted single notes, and I thought it was really smooth. And uh, um, you know, that with the sense of time and feel was was very nice. It was very enjoyable to listen to. So, hats off to you. And that is going to be my submission and my pick, I should say, of those submissions. So, uh, but all right, this has been Neil Chin. Thanks for joining us. And uh, congrats to all of you for doing such a wonderful job. And keep jamming and keep playing your ukulele out there. Let's take it to the next level, my friends. Aloha. I don't know. I kind of liked all of them. You know, um, there's two contestants that joined last time too, and they're young and they're really good. The ukulele, the the young girl, mm -hmm. and the um, ukulele Chad, the young boy. If you guys are ever in Hawaii, come uh, get get a hold of us because I would love to feature you on the podcast. Wow, that's yeah. awesome! Yeah. Take that offer. <laughs> I guess any of those contestants. <laughs> Round trip <laughs> included and lodging is <laughs> paid for. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. And a Chuck Moore. Oh, you crazy. Wow. All right. Well, congratulations to um, the Instagram <laughs> handle with no vowels. <laughs> but definitely for the, I don't know. But um, yeah, we're going to be sending you this. Uh, Wolverton Uke, so make sure you're registered at the website so that we have all your information. We know where to send it. And um, congratulations. And the, for the rest of you, the other nine contestants are going to get a $100 gift uh, or credit to, at the website. So for all of you other guys, make sure you're registered at the website so we can put money in your account. And um, yeah, we'll keep doing this here and there and uh it's, it's a lot of fun and it's really cool to see how much talent is out yeah, there yeah i was gonna say yeah. variety it's a lot of talent out there there's there's a lot and everyone's really good <laughs> that was extremely impressive all right yeah. so we have the 2022 connie Lea platinum number one these two <laughs> Thank you. 
seen these in a while. Can, can we get somebody, uh, the fire trees somebody are putting, putting off fireworks here? So if, uh, if it sounds a little bit like a war zone here and there. <laughs> so K1T5 natural. Let's start with that and get a, a sound sample. This is with the new uh, fluorocarbon strings and deluxe wood. So step up from the standard select core. Very nice coloring. It's like this flame, but not not the flame core. It's like it looks like a. F it's Anyways. <laughs> um, Yeah, I, th I would say look close. at the, the depth of, of grain. I mean, you've seen this one before, so. Yeah, pictured it yesterday. And yesterday, I got to record this new platinum with Corey. Got some samples with him and some thoughts. Spent some time taking a bunch of pictures. Oh, yeah. Sexy. But he wants to hear it from a real master. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, well, so. Okay. Uh, All right, here you go, Corey. No, <laughs> Let me, get a, let me get a second opinion. Oh, me? <laughs> it's like what they tell you with doctors. Well, all right. Corey, you said it was awesome, but uh, let me get a second opinion. I object. Second well, opinion. All right. So 2022 Platinum. Yeah. So here we have the long-awaited 2022 Platinum Kanile uh, Ukulele. This features their signature super tenor bodies but in a normal 17 inch uh, tenor scale um, as you can see this has some very beautiful koa this koa is quite similar to the sets that they were using for the 2021 platinum and it actually features something quite similar which is the true relief here and this kind of acts as a armrest um, i really like how it feels i think it's comfortable and I think it's a slightly more functional than, you know, cutting in an actual rest over here in the side. And I think it blends in really well. You don't notice it until you're kind of looking at it from a different angle. As you see, we got some really decorative inlays done by none other, none other than uh, Mr. Craig Ladin. And this features a really nice waterfall theme. And Corey pretty much went through, you know, majority of all the features of this ukulele. But one of the things that I kind of really like um, is the where the logo is placed. I like how the Kanilea K logo really pops out with the blue sky color theme all the way at the top of the headstock. And one of the small little details that I really like too, which is not the most significant part of this inlay because the whole picture is supposed to depict a very nice scenery of a waterfall but I really like small little details such as like a little bird that was kind of like you know I'm not sure if it was done with a, a, a pen bird in there? <laughs> yeah you can look at it like right here like all of, yeah in the valley oh, okay. just below the Kanilea headstock wow. or um, logo oh, did I... 
And so this ukulele is pretty much koa all around, front, back, sides, neck, um, center strip going down as well. Mango center strip. Oh, mango center strip. Yeah. Oh, dang. Koa mango koa. Oh, no wonder it's, it's like, it blends in really well. So the binding is mango as well, yeah. too. Dang. Even for the scallop cutaway over here, that's mango. A lot of hidden detail in here. And I, of course, you can't go wrong with the satin neck. And this has a more of a deeper sound um, than some of the platinums from last year. You hear a little bit more bass, and it has a lot to do with just the wide, the wide bottom bout here. Um, it's part of their super tenor design. It does add a little bit more bass response, so you hear more lows cut through over the highs it warms it up adds more depth to the overall tone and it's a it's a it sounds really nice and excited to be able to have this in my hands and do a sound sample for you folks so let us know what you think of it <laughs> notes get that a uh, pretty fat you know big yeah. sound and these are floor carbon strings too and and because i play with nails normally they tend to brighten up the, the tone but this and it's a pretty space. light uh fluorocarbon set yeah like you know you have room to go on there with a higher tension too but it's still really fat and sweet yeah i, I think it um pairs really nice i mean like for me personally i would put on a a thicker gauge just because you can be a little bit more dynamic with mm -hmm. that but I think um, for most people this would probably mm -hmm. work perfectly for them yeah yeah man Connie Leah's koa is just fire <laughs> I mean they get the like craziest curliest beautiful koa it's cr it's incredible I mean they're the one of the few companies that kind of offer this level of koa on their standard 
you know, production hey, you know what I just, you know, now that I think of it, it seems like every time I try a, a koa yuke with a koa neck, it's like extra warm for some reason. Really? Not to say that like koa is going to be warmer than mahogany, but it's a little bit more dense. And I don't know, something's going on with that because I know when Noah's built with a koa neck before or... Um, yeah, there's been a few times where it just seems to like add an extra level wow. of warmth, like um, Connie Leia's Maoli No. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I was thinking of. And um, yeah, a few other customs I've tried before that it just seems to add a little bit more to it. Do you think um, Koa is a bit more stable as a neck than mahogany? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. Okay. But um, that was just something I was. But when you about. do like a three-piece neck like that, mm. you get a good stability. Oh, and okay. um you know choosing a nice quarter sawn um piece to that one it's just it's got a really cool look to it right just look at all, all this up here on the headstock all right well we're, we're always featuring some pretty nice and usually pricey items let's end tonight with um a couple of affordable models kala has uh, a couple pretty killer um long neck sopranos yeah. that are gonna you know cost in the few hundreds not the few thousands and up you know so it's uh something that well even if you have an expensive you a lot of times you want something to take camping or leave on the couch and yeah mm. these are good and fun let's check them out Soprano jam number seven. <laughs> Sorry, I think I was tuning the Yuka. Well, not uh, correctly. Lesson on how to play the chords we were just playing during that little jam session <laughs> snippet we were just doing with these Almost sopranos. Like kind of it's thing. kind of like rag ragtime mix with a little bit of swing in it. Um, but basically, the chords we're playing with C, C7, F, C, A7. So 
let's try that again. So let's go over it one more time. One, two, one, one two, three, C. C7, good. Here comes F. Back to C. A7. D7. G7. something that you can practice on your own use it as a warm-up um, it's not necessarily any particular song um, in fact those chords are used for as a chord progression for a lot of different songs so if you're into that style of playing a lot of the chord changes that you we just did might sound a little familiar to you so keep that in mind um, and this is a great song to jam along with other people because the chords are quite simple um, most of the chords are done utilizing just one finger um, two, three at the most. Um, there's different ways to simplify some of these chords if you're having a hard time holding them. For example, instead of holding um, F with two fingers, you can just take your middle finger off and just leave that open G. It's a different type of chord, but it's another alternative if you're having a difficult time using both fingers. So whatever chord you already know and play already, experiment with different positions of holding them because as long as you're pushing down on the right string in the right position, playing the right notes, the chord will be correct. Give it another round. Right. One, two, one, two, three, C. C7. F. Back to C. A7. D7. the Kala Super Soprano. This is a new um, model to the Super Soprano family or Long Neck Soprano if you want to call it. Um, this is the Cedar Top Acacia back in size, also known as the SCAC-SLNG. So you get a really nice sound. It's a solid Cedar Top, gives you more warmth, more depth as far as tone, a little bit more volume. And actually, it's quite surprising. You wouldn't expect this much uh, this much sound to come from such a small instrument, but it carries very well. Has a good amount of volume, and acacia back and sides. It's more of an exotic type of hardwood. You got really nice binding here, satin neck. We got the ratio tuning pegs here, and yeah. Check out this new model. We've been selling this in our Holly Eva shop for a little while so far. We've gotten a, a lot of good responses from our customers. So now it's available on the website. So get it while you can and let's give it a little sound sample.
ground. I mean, I always thought the SSL and G was a really great value, and that's, I guess, like the Cedar version kind of upgrade a little bit, right? Yeah, I would say it's a nice upgrade. I mean, it also comes with a little bit more aesthetic features, like, yeah, you know, right. Avalone Rosette. A ratio tuner satin neck because uh, I'm if I'm not mistaken the SS LNG is all gloss yeah <clears throat> it reminded me of uh, Ode to a Frozen Boot from James Hill <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mine's was a frozen sock it wasn't yet it wasn't a boot yet <laughs> that was the soggy sock <laughs> So, this is the MG SLNG. Features laminate mango top, back, and sides. Nice black binding on the top and back. Uh, Kala uses really nice spalted mango on their ukulolas. Um, I like the contrast between the really dark, um, almost looks like not sapwood, but um, what's that word? I guess it's spalting, yeah. Um, has this really nice flame to it. Uh, satin finish too, I like satin. You get a little bit more of a warmer sound, naturally. These come equipped with the GraphTech Ratio tuners and regular nylon strings from Diodario. So check it out. say how grateful I am to be able to be around great friends that are so talented and to be able to bring you guys good vibrations weekly um, to be able to provide the service that we do and um, that that main service is is not even like you know the entertainment aspect it's like what goes on downstairs from here when you order an instrument from us and they're working on it to make sure that it plays as well as it possibly can and looks as great as it possibly can so that we can you know maybe offer the same products as other people but in a better package in a in um something that right out of the case you're just gonna fall in love with and um yeah let us know how we can help and thank you so much we're gonna keep trying to do this weekly we love you and we'll see you soon. Aloha.